Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we're continuing our rollout of NWSL 2022 team-by-team previews. And today, we're going to take a deep dive into Washington spirit. But before we get into all things reigning champion spirit, a quick reminder to follow us on Twitter for all breaking news at Attacking Third. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, please go ahead and leave us a five star rating and review. It takes just a second and it really helps us out. You could do that on Apple Podcasts, five star rating slash review, and on Spotify right on the Attacking Third page. So go ahead, give us five stars and help us out if you like what you hear. Lisa, we're here. We're going to talk about the reigning NWSL champion, Washington spirit. I'm excited to dive into it. We're like still a little bit away from Challenge Cup. We're still definitely far away from the regular season. But as you and I have been like coming together to do these previews, it just still feels like, you know, it's helping the time pass a little bit right before we get NWSL action. I mean, it is. This is our very last preview. All 12 teams knocked them out of the park. We're able to do them and, and do these deep dives. And um, it, it's it's a particular reason we left Washington Spirit till the very last one right before the Challenge Cup starts because they are the reigning champions. Um, they also didn't have a lot of offseason changes personnel and, and roster wise, uh, which it makes for some interesting conversation to talk about, but we did it. And now we just have to wait for the challenge cup to start. And then we can actually watch these teams in action, see what they can do. Um, I'm really, really pumped and excited for this preview in particular with you, Sandra, because I want to hear your picks. I want to see who you're watching. I want to, I want to talk to you about this. And I think a lot of our listeners are hyped for this one because it is Washington spirit. Can they be a two Pete? Let's, let's see, let's see what we got. We're going to get into all that and more. I mean, we talk a lot about in and out of these team previews, how the NWSL was coming off of like one of the most active, you know, yeah. off season trade windows, right. Ever. And it's in its own history. Uh, but uh, what we're looking at with this Washington spirit side is a lot of familiarity, right? So let's just like go in and maybe do a quick team overview to catch people up on, on uh, the Washington spirit uh, into 2022. Let's start with the head coaching situation. Washington Spirit was considered among several clubs uh, during the offseason that was going to have a head coaching position that they needed to uh, make a hire for. They did have interim head coach Chris Ward as part of their uh, squad in December of 2021. They made it official, naming Chris Ward full-time head coach. He actually took over as acting head coach in the middle of the season, late August, and then ultimately helped lead the team to an NWSL championship. Nine, two, and three record. Two of those losses ended up being COVID forfeitures, right? Procedural forfeitures that were issued to the franchise uh, throughout their regular season. Other notable hires, I mean, I don't know if we can call it a hire, but this was something that we also kept an eye on, Lisa, during uh, this sort of uh, front office interfighting, you know, a little bit between uh, ownership. There was a little bit of a, a struggle that was going on there that was really it took place over the course of several months in the latter half of the season, right? Between uh, yeah. Washington Spirit founder uh, Bill Lynch, Steve Baldwin, primary owner, and then uh, minority owner, Y. Michelle King. But now as they go into 2022, everything's in stone. Head coach Chris Ward, new majority owner, Y. Michelle King. I mean, so much happened in this offseason. We were constantly talking about Washington Spirit and their owners, what they were doing, how they were fighting, and, and what happened. And ultimately came to a conclusion and a conclusion that the players wanted, having Y. Michelle Kang be the full owner. She has full control over this team and decision making. Um, and she even towards the end of the 2021 run for Washington spirit and at the championship, she was very involved. She was at the matches. She was with the players. She was supporting them on and off the pitch. I think that that just says a lot about that. Um, and I mean, it's so crazy to think, and I sound like a broken record, I'm sure. But the fact that this team was able to 
plow their way through a 2021 season through the playoffs, go on this incredible run towards the end of the season with a new head coach, um, ownership fighting happening above them. And every time they stepped off the pitch, them not being aware of what even was happening until it hit social media. I remember the players talking about that. They, they left training one day and they saw tweets that their ownership was uh, under discussion and under battle and to still be able to go and win a championship. Now, just imagine what they are potentially able to do without all of the extra noise in 2022. Because now that the ownership debate has settled down, they have a, a head coach in Chris Ward that they wanted, that they have a taste of what he could bring from the end of the 2021 season. I mean, I think things are really, really looking up for Washington and they're already standing at the top of the mountain, right? They already won the, cha the championship, but yeah. things are still looking up for them. Yeah, that was absolutely their their finish in 2021 was about as good as you can expect, right? When we look back at all of the teams and how they did in their finish, their final place uh, in, in 2021, Washington Spirit look back on that and say, we went all the way to the mountain. We lifted the trophy. We are NWSL champions for the 2021 season. And because of that, with everything that they went through, right, sort of making sure it all came together in the end to sort of be that final team standing, when we did our attacking third way too early power rankings episode back in December of 2021, we gave this team first place again, heading into the 2022 season. And we talked a lot about some of the things that we mentioned already, having the new pieces in place. Right. And even though this episode was took place during you know, prior to an offseason and, and trade window really kicking off, we knew that that familiarity, right, with so many of these players uh, in as part of the roster was going to probably give them, you know, another road to success. But but we'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll have to see if that uh, ends up being the case. And in terms of this offseason, though, with this being a team that didn't have maybe those those big, flashy, you know, player acquisitions that we were seeing with all of this movement, right? They did make some roster additions and some signings, right? And that's what we're going to talk about in this windows right now. We, we saw them reintroduce goalkeeper Nicole Barnhart into the mix, bringing another goalkeeper into the fold, right? I think maybe sort of sent off some question marks, but I think once we get into the roster and get into the hows and the whys, we'll see why this is maybe a good addition. But they also <laughs> navigated their draft events uh, very well. They walked away with four 2022 draft picks, uh, coming out of the uh, NWSL draft week there. And probably, uh, you know, the biggest uh, news coming out of Washington Spirit when it comes to uh, signings, right, was probably this million-dollar contract that was issued to Trinity Rodman, a four-year deal uh, so equaling just over a uh, million dollars. And I, I got to say, it almost it's a big number. But for me and what we saw out of Trinity Rodman, Almost seems like a steal, quite frankly. What was your reaction when you saw those headlines? I mean, it was exciting because that's the biggest contract um, that this league has seen, that women's soccer has really seen. And also the fact that a women's soccer contract was even making headlines is huge. I mean, there are millions of dollars of contracts that are in the news every day from the NBA and even the WNBA and NFL. But the fact that now the NWSL is in the headlines – uh, it's definitely deserved. It comes right off the heels of a, a brand new CBA for the league. However, yeah, a bit of a steal. I mean, Trinity Rodman is so young. Her ceiling is she's nowhere near her ceiling because she's just 19 years old. Rookie of the year in 2021. She has so much potential already cracking into the United States women's national team roster and, and getting caps and minutes there under Vlako Andonovsky. So uh, what is it? 1.1 million, just over $1 million contract for four years. Yeah, a bit of a steal, but this is huge for Washington Spirit to be able to nail down a player like Trinity Rodman for the next four years is huge because she is so young at just 19 years old heading into her second season in the NWSL and under a coach like Chris Ward who got a taste of what it's like to coach her at the end of 2021 he can really use this year to gel her and mold her into the type of player that uh, really exposes all of her best assets. Uh, it's her speed getting in behind. It's dribbling 1v1 defenders. It's sending those crosses into the box. She's had a number of assists last year. I mean, she, she wasn't the golden boot leader. That was her teammate. But she provided so many assists in Washington Spirit squad that if she can 
continue to have assists throughout matches and then also score herself, this player is going to become a quadruple threat. And I think having her at the same club for an extended period of time, four-year contract, is only going to benefit her to have a little bit of consistency and stability in her professional career at this point. But this is the biggest uh, roster signing in the league for the year for uh, anything in the NWSL. So it has to be the biggest for Washington Spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think we've talked a lot about certain teams on, on some of these previews and saying like, oh, here was the big trade that they made. Right. But something within a lot of these things was the concept of, you know, new contracts or contracts extensions and, and those sort of maybe equating, right, drawing that line that this is actually a big deal as well, maybe just as big to some clubs, uh, you know, maybe more than like a big off season uh, player acquisition. It's maybe retaining the talent that, that you have. Right. So this was huge, huge headline breaking news for Trinity Robin and the Washington spirit. But when we're looking at their biggest losses, right. The most detrimental losses, I think sometimes uh, when it comes to covering women's sports and when you get into the constructs of, of, uh, of a salary cap and, and things like that, when you have a team that makes it all the way and goes and has uh, a defining season in winning a championship, you wonder, are you able to go that next season and help like retain a lot of these players with maybe some other restrictions in place. Right. So we saw in this off season that it was that the spirit were kind of limited in that, that they were still able to sort of retain a lot of that 2021 roster, but they did have to bid farewell to Tegan McGrady when they saw her departure to San Diego wave FC uh, really ahead of that uh, double expansion draft night. And then they also recently saw the departure of Kumi Yokoyama over to Gotham FC. And uh, they were another, uh, maybe an attacking piece, right. For this Washington mm -hmm. spirit side that was part of the, uh, the championship side that, uh, that won it all in the end. So really two names standing out when it comes to the losses here, who uh, maybe rings, you know, a little bit louder in terms of the biggest loss in your opinion, or are they both equal in terms of their departures from this club? Both Tiki McGrady and Yokoyama had very different roles with Washington Spirit. I think uh, maybe a player like Tiki McGrady is a bigger loss just because of, of where she was in her career and where she is in her career. Um, however, I, I think it's honestly a bigger gain for San Diego to get Tiki McGrady than it is a loss for Washington Spirit. If that yeah. makes sense. Just because... Yeah. Oh, it, San Diego is a team and expansion club that's looking to develop their their back line and have good defenders that can come in and learn uh, specific tendencies that Casey Stoney is looking to provide at San Diego. And there are plenty of other defenders at Washington Spirit that, that can step in and slot into the back line. I mean, Tegan, Tegan McGrady saw her minute. She was kind of in and out of the starting lineup, especially towards the end of the season. I think for her personally, this is a great fresh start to go to San Diego. She's going back home to San Diego, which is huge for her. Um, but yeah, I, I think that was a, a bigger loss. I mean, Yokoyama definitely provided that spark off the bench and they were able to contribute to the game in the attacking presence of the word. But also there's a lot of other attacking threats that Washington oh, yeah. Spirit has. So frankly, I think Yokoyama, they're going to do better at Gotham than they, they would have at Washington Spirit. They might see more time, see different looks on the field and different positions um, that Scott Parkinson will throw Yokoyama in at Gotham. So honestly, like, it, yes, big losses, but for personnel and player-wise, great moves for them and their individual uh, teams and, and their individual interests. And Washington is going to be okay without them. I mean, they have Trinity Rodman for the next four <laughs> years. I, I think they're set. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, that attack looks uh, just as good on paper, right, as maybe it did. Last year, when we're looking at, you know, breaking down acquisitions or, or, or new signings versus biggest losses, looking to a preseason roster, right, which, again, we've had a lot of fun with these on these previews because they've varied, right? But when the Washington Spirit threw out their preseason rosters, and these were preseason rosters that were coming out that first week of February, mm -hmm. right? They came out with a massive 38-player roster for preseason. I loved it. As soon as I saw it, I was just like, of course. Of course the reigning champions are going to have one of the biggest preseason rosters out there. Uh, but obviously with some player movement, uh, it's uh, it looks a little different. Now let's take a look 
at uh, the names by position here for goalkeepers. They've got a whopping five goalkeepers in their preseason. Aubrey Kingsbury, Devin Kerr, Sidney Schneider, Nicole Barnhart, and Sam Murphy. For the defenders, they've got 11 with Sam Staub, Kelly O'Hara, Emily Sonnet, Morgan Goff, Cameron Bigowski, Alia Martin, Gabby Vincic, Karina Rodriguez, Jordan Thompson, Natalie McNally, and Amber Brooks. For the midfielders, they've listed Julia Rodar, Ju- uh, Jordan Baguette, Andy Sullivan, Bailey Feist, Dorian Bailey, Anna Hefferty, Tori Huster, Taylor Elmer, Jaden Shaw, Andrea Furker, Emma Kirshner, Alexis Mitchell, and Eden Jacobson. And for forwards, they have listed Trinity Rodmans, Avery Collins, Ashley Sanchez, Ashley Hatch, Tara McCown, Tanaya Alexander, Lucy Shepard, and Audrey Harding. That is a ton of talent to be competing in preseason for Washington Spirit. But we hear it all the time across the league, Lisa, right? Uh, Really uh, competitive environments are the kind of concept of, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? So (laughs) maybe a lot of competition going on right now in uh, preseason camps. A whopping 37 players listed <laughs> on this roster. We've talked about this, that, that yeah. these clubs and coaches were like, yeah, we'll just throw a bunch of players on this roster and then we'll whittle down and see where we go. And frankly, for, for Washington Spirit, they're in the middle of their preseason where there was an international break. So they lost a lot of players. Um over a two week span for international camps and then international friendly tournament. I mean, we covered she believes cup and Arnold Clark cup here, but there was a number of them going on that uh, made it a little bit thinner at training for Washington spirit. So, Hey, having 37 players that might have helped out, but there's just a, a lot of players on this. I think the five goalkeepers, it's huge adding Nicole Barnhart onto this roster. Um, I personally like it. For Washington Spirit, she's a veteran uh, gold medalist. She's She's been to the Olympics. She's won. She's been around the block. She knows what she's doing. And I think that can provide a different veteran leadership look for this squad. But, I mean, they're fighting for spots. She, they're not going to keep five goalkeepers on their no. roster. That's just way too many. Even, like, 13 midfielders. Holy cow. That's <laughs> just a lot of players. And, and – Frankly, when you scan this list of of names on this roster, so many of them are the exact same from last year. When you look at like the starting eleven, the the okay, maybe the starting fifteen that was rotated through the starting eleven throughout the entirety of the twenty twenty one season, their names are all here. There were no major losses that Washington Spirit suffered. I mean, I know Tori Huster suffered a, a tough Achilles injury at the end of the 2021 season. So she's SEI listed SEI on this season ending injury, uh, which does change things, but they won the championship without her. So uh, not a huge, huge loss. And she's still on the roster. She'll still be there. She's still rehabbing with the team and, and being there in and out every single day. But I mean, a lot of names and a lot of the same names, a lot of familiar faces uh, for, for Washington spirit fans. I think when you're looking at those familiar faces, Lisa, that's sort of her you're nabbing when you're looking at what's the ideal starting 11 for this club as they go into 2022. And you can go through that heavy, you know, preseason roster and still see those familiar faces and say, if everything goes as planned and everyone stays healthy, you can probably nab a starting 11 based on really what we were looking at this team from last year, right? Goalkeeper Aubrey Kingsbury is probably likely to take over. Again, uh, back in the pipes, you know, as a goalkeeper, you're looking at the, the defensive line with uh, Sam Staub, a Kelly O'Hara, and Emily Sana, et cetera. So there's throughout each line, you can point out all these familiar faces, including that attack, right, which, which we saw mm-hmm. this sort of chemistry starting to develop between Rodman, between Sanchez, uh, you know, and between Hatch as well. So when it comes to maybe breaking down, maybe looking outside of an ideal starting 11, right, when we're looking at, potential young prospects to to keep an eye on for this team. Who are you keeping an eye on and why, Lisa? For me, I am keeping an eye on Trinity Rodman. Um, Hear me out. Hear me out. She rookie of the year last year. So she is still very young. One of the youngest players in the league. She did not go to college, went straight to the professional game. Um, And I, I think she had a lot to prove last year. Trinity Rodman came into the NWSL and um, 
uh, off the pitch. She doesn't have the closest relationship with her father, Dennis Rodman. And I think that for her as a player, she wanted to prove that she could make a name for herself and not her father's name in Dennis Rodman. And she showed up every day and she tried to be consistent and she worked really hard and she tried to hone her skill. And she ended up being the rookie of the year. She did what she set out to do and be the best that she could be in 2021. At the end of 2021, I mean, it really all came together for her. Rookie of the year, winning an NWSL championship, signing a four-year, over $1 million contract for the Washington Spirit. I don't want that to affect her on the pitch. And because she is so young, I think maybe it could. I, I hope that um, some veterans and, and older players around her that she's close with, uh, Kelly O'Hara, even on the squad for Washington Spirit, is kind of taking her under her wing and saying, like, Trin, it's okay. Like, you still just got to play ball. Like, that's really it. So I am keeping an eye on Trinity Rodman because I, I don't think it's going to happen, but it's a possibility that – things could get into her head as her second year in the season. Um, maybe she'll, she'll, I, I don't want to say slack off, but she doesn't think it'll be as hard as it was last year. She doesn't think she'll have to work as hard, but there are 12 teams and every single player in the league has their eyes on Trinity Rodman. She has a, a bullseye on her back and every single player is coming for her. Yeah. yeah. I don't think, I don't think that's unfair uh, to sort of mention at all. I think, Obviously, when we're looking at something like young prospect, right, you look at somebody like Trinity Rodman and see her age automatically and she fits that category, right, even though she's going into her second pro season. But coming off of the season that she had, right, winning Rookie of the Year honors, making highlight reels, right, and now coming off of an off season where she inked a, a historic contract, right, these are all things that are going to come into play as the 2022 season comes more comes closer and comes more into focus right people are going to be looking for that that comes with all the highlights and with all the hype people are going to be looking for if there's going to you know potential for a sophomore slump things mm -hmm. like that uh you know is this player going to continue you know her development and continue to take that next step into the next uh level and i'm hopeful for it i loved what we saw out of rodman during that 2021 season i do know that she also had to you know struggle you know a little bit with some some lingering back injuries right yeah. some things that she had to carry she played through some things right and carried some things through uh that regular season how is she going to continue to navigate something like that right as she continues to uh develop and and take these steps into her into her pro career and uh, who uh, is she going to rely on right well, you know outside of Sandra, before we dive into that, I'm sorry, I'm just cutting you off here. I can't stop talking. On the other side of Trinity Rodman having potentially a sophomore slump, <laughs> sorry, I just have so many words and exciting things I want to say. I got to get them out. Like, I want her to get better this year. That's a like young prospect. She can still get better. I mean, she That's, has yeah. so much potential in her. Can she be more consistent every time she steps on the field? Can she uh, really manage her injuries as a professional? I mean, right? Like I want her to crack a new glass ceiling um, that she did last year. Can she do it again and continue to grow and get better as a player? Uh, that's also the other side of the coin for Trinity Rodman. But who yeah. is she going to rely on? I'm sorry. I stole your transition there. Who is she going to rely on? <laughs> I really I really don't know. Because when you're looking, well, honestly, when you're looking at that attacking line, right, yeah. we're talking about Rodman as a whole in this attacking line. It's a pretty young attacking line, right? Yeah. And I think if you're looking at, even if you're looking at somebody like an Ashley Hatch, she's someone who's been in the league for quite some time already, but it's only what, 26, right? Yeah. So kind of like still developing alongside this. So maybe on the attacking line, Ashley Hatch is going to be that person, right? That maybe she leans into for the offensive side of things. But in terms of just like still navigating uh, a pro career, right? And sort of team camaraderie, I think this is going for everybody on this roster, not just a Trinity Rodman, but when they were looking for that experience, like that essential experience player for the Washington spirit, I don't know how you don't look at this roster and not say that it's Andy Sullivan, right? This is a player, again, another player that you're looking at seeing when they enter 
entered the league. Oh, 2018, right? Mm -hmm. You're stepping into a, a fifth year of your career, but only at what 26 years old. So it's like the age isn't matching up with maybe the the the, the level of uh, you know taking a step into being a pro with this team. But Sullivan is a, is a player that has been part of uh, you know this franchise and their programs for years, right? For a long time uh, before going pro as part of the Washington Reserves at, at one point, and then being drafted by this by this franchise and really sort of growing up and being built around a little bit, you know, as we started to see more attacking uh, players come into the fold with a Sanchez and with a Rodman. So what Sullivan is doing for this team on the pitch, right, is we're noticing is that it's also, so she's also been doing it off of the pitch for this team when it comes to taking on a leadership role, captaining the team through what was arguably their most difficult season to date, right? And I think that's going to come through even more this year because this team is likely going to be be without their previous, you know, most experienced player and somebody like a Tory Houston, right? Uh, so who who are who are they going to lean on? They're likely going to be some combination of, of, of O'Hara and Sullivan. But I see Sullivan maybe taking that next step into being that sort of uh, leader uh, for for this team moving forward. Active year. We've been covering She Believes Cup already. 2022 is going to continue to have all kinds of international windows, including a big World Cup qualifier. So when we're looking at an international spotlight for this team, I think we've already got a taste of it, Lisa, with players who are coming in and out of this club. We are because this club, Washington Spirit, has the most of any NWSL club team, the most players on the United States women's national team roster. Um, and, and that's like a consistent feature because over the last few months, the U S women's national team has had a lot of players coming in and out of their rosters, their camps. Um, she believes cup happened. And a lot of the players from Washington spirit have been the consistent ones. I think that's probably the biggest chunk of players that could honestly put a little deflation in the middle of this 2022 season for Washington spirit, because they will be without some really, really big names in Kelly O'Hara, Emily Sonnet, Andy Sullivan, Ashley Sanchez, Ashley Hatch and Trinity Rodman. These are really big key pieces. Even Aubrey Kingsbury in goal. She's gotten a, a number of call-ups she was on the roster for She Believes Cup, didn't get caps, but she's there. So she's right inside that mix. And this, when you look at this list of players, it's across all of the lines, right? I mean, we talked about the front line yeah. for uh, and the forwards for Washington Spirit. Yeah, Trinity Rodman. Oh, she's gone. Ashley Hatch. Uh, yeah, Ashley Sanchez. Uh, Andy Sullivan in the midfield. It's almost like these five or six, seven players are all the, in the starting lineup for Washington spirit. So without them, who is going to step up and, and that, I mean, I feel like I've echoed this throughout every pre preview when a team is going to be missing a lot of players during international break. I think it's up to the coaches to kind of establish that next man up mentality and almost like not equal playing time, but equal consistent, like, uh, measures of training, if that makes sense, so that when there is this these substitutes that come in, it's not a drop off of play and it's a seamless transition to what may be the substitutes or, or the second string players, that B team of players that can then get their chance to come in and prove themselves on this roster, especially during World Cup qualifiers this summer, because I think it could uh, really take a hit for Washington Spirit. I'm with you, and I agree with you 100% on that. Like I said, we already got a taste of it, right, with recent uh, January camps and then the She Believes Cup tournament that just took place. Uh, seeing all of these players representing the Washington spirit, it might disrupt a, a little bit of the flow, right, that they're trying to establish during the 2022 season on top of already having that target on their back, right, as reigning champions as they go through their title defense through this season, which probably leads us to our biggest burning question for this club entering the 2022 season, right? It's simple. Can the Washington spirit repeat as champions in 2022? Everything on paper says that they can make a run at this and take a crack at this, but it's tough to go back to back in this league. Right. And not only is that happening, they're going to be doing this title defense in an expanded NWSL year where there is now going from uh, 10 teams to 12 teams. What do you think, Lisa? Can they repeat? 
it's so easy to just look at this one dimensionally and, and the roster that they have, the head coach, Chris Ward, that's in place, uh, the new ownership that they have. It should be smooth sailing on paper for this club to just waltz through the 2022 season right into the playoffs and, and breeze their way through to the championship. However, we know that soccer is not one dimensional. It is multidimensional. There are many different factors and facets and, and layers and levels to what can happen. Injuries that come up, um, inconsistencies, national team call-ups that happen, that pull teams apart, trades that happen mid-season, loans that happen. There are so many different things that could cause this team to not fall apart, but to have holes in it throughout this regular season. I think the biggest thing is that in 2021, Washington Spirit was like this unknown young group of players. They weren't really sure what they were going to throw out at the game every time that they played. Opponents really didn't have much to go on because Washington was using their speed up top, their strength in the midfield and, and their vision on the ball to kind of break down teams. And it was almost like a surprising win for them. Not, not in a, a shocking way, but more of just like, oh, Washington Spirit, they're still winning. That's pretty fun. I don't know if they have that element of surprise this year. I don't know if they have that chip on their shoulder like they did last year and, and the willingness to prove that despite everything happening in the front office with their club, that they could come out and perform on the pitch. It was almost like an outlet for these players to step on the field and just play. Now with everything uh, a smooth off the pitch, can they continue to be those fire starters with the ball in these matches? I, I think that if there's a team that could go back to back and win two NWSL championships, this is the squad though. Yeah. Honestly, I do. If there's any team, it's this team and this roster. Listen, I'm with you on that. The question is, can they repeat in 2022? In terms of a projected finish for this club at the end of 2022, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to stay with our way too early power rankings and I'm going to leave them at number one in the power rankings and I'm going to leave them at number one in a projected finish for the 2022 season. I think there's everything on paper for this team to yeah. go ahead and try to repeat, even with an expanded landscape of teams where the competition looking a little different, maybe in some people's opinions, thinning out, right, or leveling out the type of competition that there's going to be in NWSL. But I think that just primes the recipe that primes the pot even more to be stirred for this team to go ahead and be the ones eaten at the end of this season, lifting the title for a yeah. second time. I love a good <laughs> dynasty. I would love to see a new one here in NWSL and with I Trinity mean, Robin being the face of that. I think that's very, very exciting. So we're going to keep, I'm going to keep them number one. I think you're kind of feeling the same way. And uh, Hey, if it doesn't happen, you know what we love doing? Yeah. Coming on here and being proven wrong, right, Lisa? I mean, no pressure, Washington Spirit, but we're dubbing you as number one in 2022. We're doing it. You heard it here. Prove us wrong later. Prove us how hard it was. Um, but, yeah, uh, let's see if they can do it, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Manifest it, right? It would be pretty fun to see. We're going to be covering it all along the way. I want to thank everybody for joining us and listening to our 2022 spirit preview. We have full by a uh, full team by team previews for every single NWSL club. You can check them all out. You can drop us your thoughts about Washington spirit on Twitter at attacking third or in the comments. If you subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash attacking third, don't go anywhere. We have an exclusive interview with Washington spirit defender, Sam stop coming right up after this break.